Hey, Composer Gloves here, and today we're going to be looking at making mallet sounds with Massive. We're going to be talking about the ideas that go into making mallet sounds and the properties that mallet sounds have. I'm going to be showing you how to make this sound. But we're going to be looking at it in a more dense way, something that you can definitely take and apply to loads of other stuff. Also, it sounds like this a little bit lower. So it's a really nice sound. And you notice as we get lower, that's a good point. When we get lower here, it gets kind of weird, especially when we get to these bottom two octaves down here. That sounds almost higher than this one. And the reason is our filter. The filter is critical to this process. So, uh, so whenever we're making mouth sound, there's a couple major characteristics. The first most obvious one is the decay. We have a sound that hits very quickly and then it decays away. And we can see it hits very quickly, decays away. I'm actually using a couple different envelopes to control the aspect of various parts of our spectrum. So that, so this is a little more dense than it at first looks because we have to consider also the spectrum of the sounds as they occur. So when you hit a mallet, you're going to hit it and then there will be a fundamental tone that rings out. It's going to be the, the strongest tone. And then there will be a series of overtones that are, for the most part, unrelated. Very similar to noise, but a very, very specific kind of noise that generate that is generated by you hitting whatever it is you're hitting. The marimba or those... Uh, the xylophone, I couldn't say xylophone there for a second. But anyways, you get the idea. When we hit it, there's gonna be a strong fundamental followed by a whole bunch of harmonics that are sort of just a jumbled up mess. Probably better to call them overtones, but there will still be a harmonic series in there. It'll still be in there. So this makes bell tones quite the interesting and wood, wood tones quite the interesting topic. People will oftentimes use RM, FM, AM, any sort of modulation very quickly to generate sidebands that will get themselves closer to these spectra than would trying to go ham at it and generating each one individually. Like that would just be way too hard and controlling all the different spectrums. I chose to start with one of the wavetables because they have all these wavetables. Some of them were probably created using natural means. So maybe they're bits and pieces of actual recordings. I'm not sure how they made these. Some of them are, were probably made using RMFM. Like I just don't know. So I went in there and used that. So I decided to sort of move around that step, but you could for sure create some similar things. So now that we know we have a sound that decays very quickly, this also means that there's going to be space. So while we're creating our sound, we're not going to have verb on it. This will be gone. And you see, it sounds like where you would never experience something with that sort of decay on it in real life. There, unless you were in an anechoic chamber, which I've never been in. So maybe in an anechoic chamber, it would sound like that. But I, I can't even say that for sure because I've never been in one. So... The point is, when we have reverb, suddenly your brain has way better of an idea of what to do with it. And that's implied in our volume curves. So that's included there. We are controlling the volume of our sort of detuned harmonics separately from our fundamental pitch, which is, which is one reason why the sound is, is so nice. It matches up with the profile we're looking for. The other thing I'm doing here is check it out. If I play some low tones, because of the method I've chosen to do this, so let's play some like, uh, let's go really low, let's go. You get that, and that's not even close to the tone we had before. And then, okay, so it's two, check it out. So here's two, here's our bottom octave. Our bottom octave, our bottom octave sounds almost higher than, our, than the one above it. And that has a result to do of the method I've chosen to do this. So let me identify for you the filter. So I'm using a band reject filter. And this filter, it, it's a notch filter. So it finds frequent, um, frequencies in the spectrum and gets rid of them and leaves the other ones alone and notches them out. If I turn it off, you hear the, let me turn off the reverb and the main fundamental. So the woody part of our sound, the detuned harmonics, they, they can't stay the same for every single note. That would be static and it would sound really funny if they stayed the same. So instead, I need them to move around. Now, I don't know how they move around on a real instrument. I don't even have the general patterns and idea of them. I could go look it up and think about it and figure it out. But I just knew that I needed them to change for it to sound more natural. So if I play it, you see that like the pitch is like, wait, 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 like it's all crazy sounding. And that helps me get that wooden texture. It's also a very short click when compared with the fundamental, which is substantially longer and louder. 
So here, what I've chosen here is I've gone with the Escalation 1 wavetable. Sounds like this. And you see I have cut back on its volume substantially. If I get rid of the filter though, that's the sound. So I might be going like, what the heck? I actually have the noise on down here. So I have the noise on generating just random frequencies. I'm, fr I'm notching out some of them. And I'm also doing that with the Escalation 1. Now, when I do this, I'm going to get my the, the thing I'm looking for. When I combine it with my sine triangle waveform, all of a sudden it sounds really similar to what I, I was going for. And obviously, it's a long ways off from being the real thing because of the methods I've chosen to do it. But you see how I've come to an approximation of the sound and some of the ideas that went in behind it. So what this thing is doing, some interesting things is, I am moving the pitch of the cutoff value ever so slightly with an LFO. So you see it's it's moving, and this is quite a fast LFO, so you can hear it going woo woo woo, which you could hear in the sound as I hit it. But because it only the sound is so short, it only contributes to the transient section of our sound. So that creates the, the wooden effect. I chose the cutoff very specifically because I have a very high resonance value, and the resonance is very important. If I take it away, suddenly it sounds nowhere near the same. If I bring it back, gives me that attack again. Then I need to put it into space, right? So I say, okay, I'll put it into space. And I have my sound. This sound, so that's how you make the sound. That, those are the ideas. So you take a short sound, you shape the harmonic spectra, and then the filter was critical in this one. And the, the way I came to this sort of a idea of approaching this sound was I was actually working on another sound called the Bad Whistler. And it sounds like this. So you see you're going, woo, woo, woo. Like the, like the guy's trying to whistle, but he can't get the tone out. And if you take the... Now, the, the idea behind this one is I have my LFO controlling the, the resonance of the reject filter, and that causes the noise to be emphasized up and down, like woo, woo, because it's an LFO. And as a result, I get that sound. So that's pretty cool. If you actually, because the resonance is so high, if you increase this, you get like a bird call almost. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's where this sort of came from. And then I wound up settling on this here, Airy Xylophone. But as you see, as a result of the way we chose our filters, we know that the frequencies, when we when we hit a really low note, the spectrum is not going to hit the filter the same way as these upper ones will. And as a result, we lose our belt, our, our timbre, for the most part, down low. So this would not be a very good approach for doing low. Uh, it could be, if we adjust our filter, we could make it sound better in the low end. But then we'd sacrifice the high end, and that's typically what people are going to be playing in anyways. So I decided to go for that side instead of the low side. So anyways, that's the sound. And so we see here the, the reverb, and that's also why that resonance right there is like an unnatural resonance, because it like makes no sense. But as soon as we go a little bit higher, we're out of that range of the filter, and it's only removing the components that we deliberately like audibly sought out to remove by setting our cutoff knob. So hopefully that makes sense. I hope this you could take these and use them in your own sounds, keeping in mind how various parts of your spectrum may need to be treated differently over time, such as this needs to decay much faster and sharper, as you can see here, than the sound itself actually does, which is much longer. Our, our fundamental spends a lot more time ringing out. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, support me on Patreon, and have a blessed day.